Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today I'm going to show you how to use the serial port to interface some of our projects. The serial port is a common two-wire interface. It's been around on computers for decades now. And even most microcontrollers have a serial port in the form of a UART, but it's actually at a different voltage level, so it's not directly compatible with computers. Even now, with USB as the most popular interface, the serial port's still with us. We're not plugging in serial port cables anymore, though. We're emulating it over USB. That's really handy because devices can be powered by USB and still appear as a simple serial port to the computer. There's a lot of old applications that work with serial ports that are still very useful, and it's also a lot easier to write your own software to work with a serial port. Even a simple scripting language like Python or Perl can use a serial port with just a few lines of code. But if you want to use USB, even something simple like USB HID, you're going to end up pulling in a lot of drivers, there's a lot of setup involved, it's going to be a lot more difficult. We'll start with the Bus Pirate because it's an easy device to interface. It uses an FT232 USB to serial converter chip. That takes the USB signals and converts them to 3.3 volt UART that the PIC uses to do all of the Bus Pirate stuff. The Bus Pirate is interfaced from a simple serial terminal. We're using TerraTerm. We'll open a connection to the Bus Pirate on COM10. Now we hit enter. The command line in the Bus Pirate shows. This is the high impedance mode command prompt. It means that nothing's going out of the Bus Pirate. That means it's safe to connect your project without worry that there's going to be any damage to it. We can hit I to get some information about this Bus Pirate. It's a version 3B hardware. You can hit question mark and enter to see the menu for the Bus Pirate. This is all simple stuff. This is just using a simple serial terminal interface. But the Bus Pirate also has a binary mode, and that's something scripts can use to send raw byte commands to it and control the different features of the Bus Pirate. The binary mode needs characters that we can't type from a keyboard. They have to be raw byte values that are sent to the Bus Pirate. We'll use that using a program called Hercules. We'll open up the Bus Pirate on COM10. We can type some simple commands here too, like I. So to get into binary mode, we need to send 0, 0, 20 times. This isn't actually 0, 0 typed out. This is the byte value typed as a hex value and sent to the Bus Pirate. And the Bus Pirate responds, bit bang, IO mode, version 1. So now we're in the binary mode. We can send some other commands, like 0, 2, to go into I squared C mode. And it responds, I squared C, version 1. This is all easy stuff. All of these commands are completely documented on the wiki. So if you're writing a script and you want to control the bus pirate in these modes, it's just a matter of sending these simple commands as byte values to the bus pirate over the serial port. Now let's move on to the logic sniffer. This is a logic analyzer we co-developed with the Gadget Factory. It can record signals between two chips and show it as a graph on the screen. It's a lot easier to debug your projects when you can see why things aren't working than it is to work blind. This is one of the handiest tools in our workshop and we highly recommend it. We'll connect to the logic sniffer on COM port 13. It's in normal mode right now, and this speaks what's called the SUMP protocol. This is a protocol that defines how the field programmable gate array takes instructions from the computer and dumps data back to be shown on the display. So first, for the SUMP protocol, we'll send 0 five times to reset it. No matter what command it's stuck in or where it's stuck at, the logic analyzer will be completely reset after we send 0 five times. Command 2 returns the protocol version. It responds 1 ALS which is actually SUMP Logic Analyzer version 1 backwards. That's a quirk of the old equipment that it was originally based on. One of our extensions to the SUMP protocol was a metadata command. It returns some extended data so that the software can adjust to different hardware. This wasn't part of the original SUMP protocol. We send command 04 and we get back a descriptor. The first part of the descriptor is field 01. And that's a text description of the hardware that's attached. Here it says open logic sniffer version 1.01. .01. The string is terminated with the null character, which is 00. The next bit is 02, which is the version in simple text form, also terminated with the null character. And then from there we have some actual byte values that show things like the number of probes, the amount of memory, so that the client can adapt to the capabilities of the hardware. Now we'll connect to the logic sniffer again, this time in update mode. The commands here are a little different. Each command is four bytes, so we send null four times, and we get back hardware version 1, firmware 3.0, bootloader version 2.0. Another interesting command we can send is command 1, and that will return the version of the flash chip on the board. There's actually a whole bunch of different flash chips out there because supply changes all the time, so we've had to tweak the software and the firmware to handle different chips. We can get that version by sending the JDEC command, which is a standard command all flash chips respond to. The one command, again, is a four byte command. The first byte is one, the last three bytes are zero. We'll send that, and we get back the JDEC ID. Now currently we're in text mode, so we need to switch over to full hex mode and do that again. We send our command one, zero, 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 and we get back EF 
301300. Now if you look on the wiki, if you look on the internet, you'll find out that that's a WinBond chip with 4 megabits of storage space. Another interesting command is the self-test command, that's command 7. This is the same self-test that's run every time the logic analyzer starts up. Send it, it takes a second, the board will reset, our result code is 0, and that means there's no errors. But let's hold down the update button and try it again. This time we get error 20. If you look at the error code table, it'll show that this is a problem with the pull-up resistor on the update button, and it's correct. Now let's close that out and move on to the final device, the USB infrared toy. This is an infrared receiver transmitter for computers, so you can control your computer with a remote control. You can also look at the signal on a logic analyzer and see what it's doing. The IR toy has a couple different commands that will actually work from a normal serial terminal, so let's check those out first. If we send V, we'll get the hardware and firmware version. In this case, it's Hardware version 1, firmware version 21. Another command is the self-test, which we can get by sending T. We type T. In this case, it gives us the version again, which means it passed the self-test. If there was something wrong, it would give us a failure code. And finally, the default mode of the IR toy is an IR man compatible RC5 decoder. The way the IR man protocol works is the PC says IR to the device, and the device responds OK. In our case, we just respond OK anytime we see the letter R. So if I type R into the terminal, we get back OK, and we know we're in RC5 decoder mode. Most of the IR toy commands require raw byte values though, so now we're going to move over to Hercules and send some of those. This is an RC5 remote control. The IR toy will decode the codes and show them as 6 byte packets in the terminal. So we'll hit play first. The button press gave two 6 byte packets. The remote protocol is 1E, the specific button is 75, and then we've got four dummy bytes that'll never be anything but zero. When we hit different buttons, we get different values. Here's play, and rewind, and fast forward, and number one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. The IR toy implements the Sump Logic Analyzer protocol, just like the Logic Sniffer Logic Analyzer does. That way we can capture remote control codes and visualize them on the screen. Just like with the Logic Sniffer, we'll send zero five times. That'll reset it into Logic Analyzer mode. Now we can send some Sump Logic Analyzer commands, like two, and we'll get the response one ALS, which is Sump Logic Analyzer version one just like the Logic Sniffer did. Today we explored three devices using a serial terminal. Even though we live in a world dominated by USB, serial ports are still everywhere. You can use simple techniques like these to rescue a router or talk to the bootloader on your digital camera. We'll be back next week with a new workshop video. Thank you for watching.